Casey, we need to know where funny comes yeah, from. Yeah, where does that yeah. fucking know? You brought it up. I was, I was curious. Where do you think it comes from for you? I don't know where it comes from for me, but I, um, I do think that truth is one of the things, like the telling the truth. Yeah. Because I think um, anyone, like, when you get in that position where you're trying to make people laugh, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. But if you just go back to telling the truth, but I mean... I don't really know. I mean, I think it's one of those magic things. It's elusive. Like, there's all these different kinds of comedy, and it's it's such a stunning thing. You know, well, what makes people laugh is like, it's like delicious. You know, all the different versions of how that comes out. I'm late. Mm. Which is weird, because in my rational mind, I know there's no way I'm pregnant, but I still get that little, like, flutter of excitement, you know? Mm -hmm. God, it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. It's like that feeling when you're at the top of a roller coaster and it's like scary, but it's like fun scary because you know you're safe. Mm -hmm. I remember and it used to be scary, scary <laughs> before you got the vasectomy. What's the most overtly sexist thing that has happened to you in the workplace in Hollywood? I think racism usually trumps it. Yeah. yeah. It's a little it's a little easier to spot, I find. I mean, all the shows that I've been have been run by women. This is my first experience on Blackish where it really is told through a man's point of view. Um, there are certain moments here and there that's more that people don't realize the stereotypes that you're perpetuating. Um, but when called on it, they're very happy to kind of open that up. But I think also, uh, often in comedy, I think the, the sexist stuff or racist stuff happens behind the scenes, not, you know, most of us are playing roles and we're all uh, outspoken women who sort of, I would imagine, speak up when it's the, the image that we're portraying. Doesn't and I love that you that. started with like Mara on Girlfriends mm -hmm. in this environment that was her really trying to like change up the paradigm on yeah. television. And I think you all contributed to that in the most, I think so many shows wouldn't exist if you and Mara hadn't made Girlfriends and pushed that as far as you did. Oh, thanks. I, I think Mara was really instrumental in that. And it was really interesting. I mean, you know, that was the first, that show ran, we did 173 or 76 episodes or something. Show. And, um, but show. to be, you know, in an environment where it was run by a woman, four women leads, like, and that was not my first job, you know, I did Lyris's Lounge and whatever, but to have that experience at the beginning sort of gives you a template that you do not walk out into the world and see everywhere. Right, yeah. um, so it, it changed the way, the expectation that I have um, for the way things are moving. I just thought of the worst story. And I'm gonna tell the abridged version, but I was testing for a show, network television, went in for the screen test. It was for a lawyer, Harvard educated <laughs> motherfucking lawyer. Okay. That is amazing. I already wore a skirt suit seemed appropriate. Yeah. yeah. And on the heel. There were so many discussions about my hair. They had printed up all these oh. pictures of what they wanted me to look like. Oh. I was like, you realize every picture you found on the internet is me when I was, uh, I don't know, 15 fucking years ago. <laughs> I'm not gonna look like that. Yeah. They printed them all up. We get there, the, literally sitting in the casting director's office. They had me in and out of the bathroom, Ugh. trying mm. on clothes for them. They finally pick a skirt they like that is the shortest skirt that I brought. They get a T-shirt from one of the people in the office, and then the woman is like, "That yeah, your your boobs." They're like, and I'm like, "Yeah," because I didn't bring a bra for this T-shirt. Like I've got the different bra for the other thing. She's like, "Don't worry about it. What size are you?" Who wears a B no. screams down the hall. This is for my audition. This is chilling. It is chilling. I know. Chilling. I know. And you know, you're in that situation. You're testing. Like, I was so busy thinking about other things. Like, I'm trying to do my best to like right. take care of myself as a human. And somehow auditioned. And right. then, and then I remember coming out of my screen test and thinking, like, what did I just allow of myself? The other actress turned the corner, and I'm not kidding you. She was dressed to go to a club. <laughs> and she got the role. Yeah. And I remember thinking, thank God I didn't get that role yeah. because I would have died every week yeah. being tarted up in a way. And it was my last experience doing that. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But that's like part of the biz. <laughs> <laughs>